Dolphins fans, be honest. I know you're superstitious. So like this video if you want the Dolphins to get back on track and get in the win column this weekend against the Jacksonville Jaguars in London town. I apologize for the accent, but at least producer Matt got a good kick out of that one. But seriously, like the video because you're going to be kicking yourself if the Dolphins lose. And the only reason they lost is because you didn't like the video. Just hit that like button and everything pain-wise will go away. Now let's get into the Week 6 preview. Today's sponsor of the video is Magic Spoon, and that's who we're presented by. $5 off your first order of Magic Spoon. All you got to do is go to magicspoon.com slash dolphins. We'll have a little bit more about Magic Spoon later on in the show, but man, I'm in love with that cocoa flavor. I know y'all have heard that a couple times, and we'll talk about the cocoa a little bit more here in a bit. But really, when it comes down to it, the nuts and bolts of this show... It's all coming down to this matchup in London Town. As I mentioned, the Miami Dolphins will head across the pond to face off against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who um, this is their home away from home, really. I think the NFL is just kind of trying to ease them into this transition to go across the pond. Miami is favored in this one at minus three and a half. The total over under 47, which is pretty high actually, if you look at these offensive stat numbers, which we will hear in a bit. But before we get into this preview, I want you to predict the score for me. What do you think the score will be between the Miami Dolphins and the Jacksonville Jaguars in week six? Again, we're talking about two of the worst offenses in the NFL. And if you're a Dolphins fan, you know that the Dolphins have struggled offensively. But let me know down in the comments. I'll get my score prediction here in a bit. But I want to hear from y'all first. And I want to hear from y'all about this man right here. Do a tongue of Iloa, who is supposed to be the quarterback for week six he was activated from the IR and he will be ready to play according to Brian Flores in terms of if he's right and he shows what he needs to in practice I fully expect him to but the Dolphins announced his activation with designation to return on Monday and then headed in the right direction to start week six right this was the biggest thing for Tua when it came down to it is he's headed in the right direction he was throwing before he was activated, which is really big when you're talking about a rib injury. But really, what I'm curious to talk about is what can we expect from Tua in his return, right? We're talking about a Miami offense that is awful. I mean, let's just be honest about it. I don't know if it matters who's at quarterback because looking at these numbers right now for the 2021 stats of the Miami Dolphins offense through five weeks, um, I hope there's no children watching because, my goodness, this is scary. It's spooky season, I get it, but I'm not trying to scare you all with these stats. These are real stats for the Miami Dolphins right here. Just over 70 yards rushing, not anywhere near 300 total yards, and they're awful. And I mean absolutely awful when scoring points. Second worst in the NFL. For me, with Tua coming back, my hope for this team is that he could help propel the offense forward, right? You think about the major talk in the offseason was Tua getting his body right, making sure that he was good with his footwork, and then getting the weapons around him. Now, you wish that maybe the offensive line would have been a priority after what we've seen through five weeks, but the weapons are there when healthy, and now you have Preston Williams, Devontae Parker, and of course Jalen Waddell in the Alabama connection. I'm curious to see if this offense that was built for Tua Tungavailoa can propel a little forward with him now healthy. But before I give a little bit more in this preview, I want to hear from you guys. What is your one-word reaction to Tua returning? I think it's interesting for me because I get to see all the comments y'all put in on these videos, and I try to interact with y'all. I really want y'all to be involved in the shows. It's interesting to see the turn of the fan base a little bit on Tua Tungavailoa. Now, some of y'all I know were not in on Tua to begin with. A lot of y'all were head first in on Tua, right, in terms of just he's going to be a star. It's interesting to see things change in a fan base, but I'm interested to hear from y'all. What is your one-word reaction to Tua returning in week six against the Jacksonville Jaguars? There's no need to hear y'all's response on this. I know y'all love Magic Spoon, and you know I love Magic Spoon. 13 grams of protein, 4 net carbs, 0 grams of sugar, and better yet, you can even get 14 grams of protein. Sometimes it depends on the flavor. Don't even grab one box. Go ahead and grab a box, maybe even four. Go to magicspoon.com slash dolphins, and you can save $5 off your first order of Magic Spoon. Again, when you're looking at what's going on here, right, you have cinnamon. You have cocoa, 
Like there are so many good flavors for Magic Spoon, right? And, and the best part about it, I don't feel guilty when I have that late night bowl of cereal and I only kept it to one when it wasn't healthy cereal. Now I have two, three, and maybe I get judged by my girlfriend and have four. But Magic Spoon has changed the game for me in terms of not feeling guilty about eating these childlike breakfast cereals because it's jam packed with protein, has zero grams of sugar and four net carbs. Nobody else is doing this. You need to get your hands on one of these boxes. Hell, make it four. Go to magicspoon.com slash dolphins to save $5 off your first order of Magic Spoon. Going a little bit more in depth on these wide receivers so far this season, and Preston Williams has only played in one game, right? That was against, well, last weekend against the Bucks down in Tampa. But you look at what these guys have, right? In terms of Jalen Waddle being a top 10 pick in the NFL draft, he's been solid so far, right? The quarterback play has really hindered his development and really him potentially breaking out as a rookie. Devontae Parker, who knows if he's actually going to play this week, but he's the guy that really is the big attraction, right? For Tua Tunga Vailoa, you have Mike Gusecki as well, but those are the three wide receivers that stand out to me, and hopefully Devontae Parker can play. He did not practice and is not ready to practice on Wednesday. We'll keep you monitored on his situation throughout the week, but for me, I'm just interested to see them play with Tua, right? I mean, we haven't seen Preston Williams, obviously. We've seen a game and really two drives with Devontae Parker, and then Jalen Waddle, same thing. I want to see what this offense can look like because it was built around Tua. And that's the thing. You're going up against arguably one of the worst defenses in the NFL, in the Jacksonville Jaguars. You have to capitalize on this opportunity if you're the Miami Dolphins. Because let's be honest, if it doesn't get right this week, I don't know when it's going to get right for this offense. Looking at the offensive stats for both of these teams headed across the pond, and oh, that is... Again, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if there's children watching this, this screen, and you're going to have nightmares over this. The only thing positive on that whole screen, Jacksonville can run the ball, I guess. Miami sure as hell can't. I mean, when looking at these offenses for these two teams, it's really going to come down to, will the defense allow them to make a mistake? Because right now, they've just struggled, whether that's with turnovers, if you are the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are tied with the Kansas City Chiefs for most giveaways. And then you have the Miami Dolphins, who are not too far behind, tied for 28th with the most amount of turnovers, and two of the worst scoring teams in the NFL. Miami is the worst now at 15.8. Something has to change, and hopefully that is with Tua, because you have to capitalize on this porous Jacksonville Jaguar defense. And you know what you also have to capitalize on? Free Miami Dolphins videos daily? Like, what are you doing? Hit that big red button. Help us get to 18,000 when we're almost 400 away as of the time of this recording. We're trying to get to 18K before week seven. And hey, we're well on our way right now. We all are loving the content we're putting out right now. We're loving the community that we're building here on Miami Dolphins today. We want as many people in this community as possible. Tell all your Miami Dolphins friends, and even if they're not Miami Dolphins friends, well, tell them to subscribe anyway and help us get to 18,000 subscribers right here on Miami Dolphins today. Speaking of the defense of Jacksonville, um, man, seriously, I know it's spooky season, but I'm not trying to scare you all this bad with these numbers. My goodness, they're awful. Miami is now one of the worst defenses in the NFL in terms of points per game and yards per game, coming in at 30th respectively in both. Not too far ahead, Jacksonville at 29 overall. I mean, when you look at what is going on here, these numbers that Matt had to put on the screen because I made the graphic, I know he's trying not to scare children right now, but it is spooky season, as I've mentioned. These numbers are brutal. I mean, for both sides. These defenses are absolutely abysmal, and it's surprising because Miami... You think about it, the secondary is supposed to be a lot better than it actually is right now. You have some high guys in terms of maybe Jalen Phillips breaks out this season, Emmanuel Ogba on the, def or in the, on the defensive line pass rush aspect of things. You'd think you'd have a couple more guys impactful on that defense, but you just haven't right now, right? And the defense has been a bigger surprise in terms of just how bad it is compared to the offense because we just didn't know what the offense was for Miami, right? Those numbers that we just showed for both teams, brutal. And let me hear from you guys on this. Just be honest with me. If you're worried about the defense, simply like the video. I am definitely worried, especially when you have two guys on that back end in Byron Jones and Xavier Howard that are supposed to be the best corner duo in the NFL. They haven't performed like that. The pass rush has been suspect at best at times. It's been periodic in terms of you have a couple plays here and there, maybe a drive or two, and then it just seems to disappear. 
I really am worried about this Dolphins defense moving forward. Let me know if you are by simply just liking the video. Talked about Devontae Parker a little earlier, and it looks like he's going to be a big question mark going into week six, if he even gets to play at all. His hamstring is bothering him. Last week, he was a bit of a surprise and active just because he popped up late on the injury report, maybe thought it was just precautionary. Instead, he missed that game. Looks like he is going to miss this week as well, as Flores has come out and said he isn't ready to practice. And that's concerning in the sense that this offense needs as many playmakers as possible because you're already missing Will Fuller. Albert Wilson has been awful. And then you traded Jakeem Grant for a sixth-round pick, which he wasn't doing much anyway offensively, right? And speaking of offense, Liam Eikenberg. I really want to see him build upon the flashes he had last week, right? He started at left, left tackle in week five against arguably the best defensive line in the NFL, in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he made a couple rookie mistakes, but overall, I thought he looked pretty good. I like the move in word for Austin Jackson a lot more than him being on the outside. Maybe you can find something on that left side with two, well, really young offensive linemen and first-year player, Liam Eikenberg, and then second-year player at left guard now in Austin Jackson. I wonder if that's going to be the case moving forward because I do like what I've seen from Liam Eikenberg, and remember, Tua, left-handed, this will be the tackle in his face, so Tua... Might need a rookie on that side instead of on the back end, but who knows how they shuffle this offensive line, but I am encouraged about Liam Eikenberg moving forward. Other guy I'm encouraged about, Jalen Phillips. Man, I am loving me some Jalen Phillips. Now, I talked about that pass rush, not really living up to expectations, right? But Jalen Phillips has shown a lot in his rookie campaign so far in the sense that he can get to the quarterback, and him and Emmanuel Agba, again, not consistently, but if they find a way to be consistent, could be a formidable pass rush for the Miami Dolphins moving forward. I fully expect Jalen Phillips to have a breakout game against really a top, bottom five offensive line in the Jacksonville Jaguars this weekend. He won't have to go up against Cam Robinson. That'll be Emmanuel Ogba on the left side. So really looking forward to seeing a breakout type game from Jalen Phillips because this is one of those cookie you know, cupcake type games when it comes down to it, right? You want to see some of your guys build upon this, get some momentum, go to two and four and head into week seven, which they will play. No buy for Miami in week seven like the Jaguars. The Miami Dolphins actually opted to play in week seven even after traveling across the pond. So I'm interested to see if Jalen Phillips can have a breakout game in week six for the Miami Dolphins. I'm also interested to hear What's your score prediction for this one? Let me know. Again, Miami 1-4, Jacksonville 0-5, 1-10 combined, a 10% winning percentage. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit between these two teams, but here we are. Let me know what your score prediction is for Miami and Jacksonville. I'll be honest with you. I think there's actually going to be quite a bit of scoring in this one just because, well, I think the defenses are that bad. I think the offenses control what they need to do, and I've got Miami winning 30-21, to 21, covering the over and covering the spread. Will the Dolphins and you two can go and really just uh, look at what they're doing in this one in the sense that I think Tua being back will be a spark for this team. I think the offense will get going a little bit against a terrible, and I mean terrible, Jacksonville Jaguars secondary.